Welcome everyone to our Label Studio Enterprise Security Webinar. My name is Bernard Laws, a Solutions Engineer here at Hartex. Today, we will cover a high-level overview of how Label Studio protects your data. Now, our agenda is going to be brief. Uh, we're going to cover the deployment model with respect to data flow, uh, the enterprise architecture, data flow security, and single sign-on, uh, as well as role-based access control and the logging and monitoring and authentication uh, processes that are associated with that. First, I'd like to start off with the certifications. So data security and privacy are core aspects of Label Studio Enterprise. We really aim to blend security seamlessly with our operations and, and, uh, and our engineering, uh, essentially to build workflows that will build safe applications allowing our customers to scale while giving them the flexibility to respond to important changes in their business outcome. So as of today, Label Studio Enterprise holds a SOC 2 Type 2 certification. Uh, first and foremost, uh, when it comes to deployment, what you're seeing here is the, the high level structure of how a deployment looks like. On the top here, this is essentially the browser. This is what your annotator, your reviewer, your administrator would use to access Label Studio. Label Studio is here in the middle, this plane here, and you have the data where you store your data, whether that be AWS, Google Cloud Storage, Azure, or whatever you want to use. The key thing here is that the data planes for control and data are separate. Essentially, once you authenticate with Label Studio, the data does not reside in Label Studio, only references to the data is in Label Studio. Those references tell the browser what data to get from the cloud storage. That data comes directly from the cloud storage into the browser itself. In this way, the data loads directly into the browser and not through Label Studio. Hartex never needs to access your data. We don't need to store it. It all comes directly from your storage and into the browser. Finally, I'd like to just mention a, uh, a point on TLS encryption. All of the data in transit is encrypted. That means when connecting and reading the URLs from the bucket and sending the annotations back to the cloud storage. So this is a two-way street. So not just receiving data from the cloud storage, but also when it's returned, right? And so this discommunication as well between the browser and Label Studio also encrypted. Now let's talk a bit about architecture. Um, as we mentioned earlier, all data is encrypted in transit, but also all data is encrypted at rest. So sensitive data uh, uh, in being encrypted in transit is one thing, but when it comes to passwords as well, so encryption is a, is a key component to our security. With Label Studio Enterprise, in, administrators have the ability for both SAML and just-in-time provisioning as well as full provisioning, as well as controlling access through, L, through LDAP and Active Directory identity, identity providers. Uh, additionally, we will explore later um, uh, the idea of user privileges and role-based access control. But if we continue down here, we'll see that secure cloud storage connection can be established for both importing and exporting uh, to your respective cloud storages. And the URLs can be, uh, can, uh, can be established with expiration times through pre-signed URLs. Now, just a little more about TLS encryption. Uh, TLS connection is enforced across all product services, including the app, right? Which means establishing secure connections by connection, um, uh, HTTPS protocol, um, and, you know, including all the secured cookies, uh, the Postgres SQL, right? Uh, as well as the Redis. Okay, uh, let's see. Maybe I want to also mention a bit here in terms of, uh, uh, TLS uh, encryption protocol is also supported between all application components, right? So that means API is accessed only by specific HTTP verbs, as well as APIs expecting to be accessed from the browser-based clients implement a proper cross-origin sharing course policy. Okay. Now, uh, we will have time for questions at the end. So uh, if there's any questions at the end, please, uh, if, if I'm not clear about any of the points here on the slides, feel free to ask them at the end. Now onwards to data flow security. And when we talk data flow security, primarily what I'm talking about is the cloud storage data flow security. On the cloud storage, 
the app enables restricted access to the storage keys and the credentials, as well as limited access through pre-signed URLs. I mentioned it earlier in the, in the previous slide. In the case of custom data provider, like a, a non-cloud storage, meaning non-GCP, non-AWS, et cetera, uh, the app enables restricted access to the data URI stored in the database. The data access requests are verified and proxied with basic auth headers to the specified endpoints. This prevents URI from being accessed elsewhere by any unauthorized users. In this way, the app enables restricted access to the credentials. Uh, additionally to this, uh, cloud storage authentication credentials could be provided globally for an on-prem environment, if that's applicable to you, uh, as well as specifically per project by an authorized user. Of course, uh, API tokens can be reset at any time to, uh, if, if there's any concerns in that respect. Now, a bit more about uh, single sign-on. We mentioned it earlier a couple of slides ago, but uh, Label Studio Enterprise supports single sign-on using SAML to manage access uh, to Label Studio using your existing identity provider, uh, whether that be LDAP or um, Microsoft uh, uh, Active Directory, et cetera. So Label Studio Enterprise supports the following IDPs, Okta, one login, ping, uh, let's see, um, Federate, uh, Federate and ping and as well as ping one. Well, essentially, e even others that use SAML assertions as well. Uh, if, if I did I mention Okta, yes, Okta as well. Uh, all right. Uh, and uh, so Label Studio support for uh, for SCIM 2.0 interacts with our customers' single sign-on integration, for example, Okta, uh, allowing them to manage access to Label Studio Enterprise workspaces, grant roles to individuals and user groups. This provides a great segue into our next topic which is on role-based access control. Now, when it comes to role-based access control, there's essentially four tiers that I want to describe before I speak of the roles themselves. The four tiers are at the organization level. If you've ever taken a look at the enterprise uh, version of Label Studio, you will find that there's an organization level where you can invite people into the organization. And at this level, these are people who are within your, 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 your greater team then this can be broken down into inviting people to specific workspaces. These workspaces are groups of projects that you've grouped into uh, essentially a folder. And then the project itself can be, uh, can be restricted to specific users from within that workspace. So that's really three tiers. And as a final bit, you're able to uh, assign specific annotators to specific tasks or specific reviewers to specific tasks. So in this way, you have essentially four tiers, primarily three, but essentially four tiers at the organization level, the workspace, the project, and at the task. Now of the roles, there are essentially four active roles, the annotator, reviewer, manager, and administrator. The annotator is the lowest level role. This person can only uh, access projects that are assigned to them uh, and these, uh, and they can only annotate the task. The reviewer can both annotate and review tasks that are assigned to them. Uh, the manager has full administrative rights across all of the projects within the workspace they are assigned to. And the administrator would have full administrative rights across the entire organization. Now, along with role-based access control and, and, and having people specifically within your organization, it's very important to know what these people are doing. So every incoming request, response, payload, runtime, uh, access errors, everything is logged and stored for consequent incident investigation. This could be useful for troubleshooting. This could be useful for uh, essentially any kind of auditing that you, you need to do. Uh, dashboards, alerting mechanisms uh, are enabled in, in, in the cloud environment to continuously monitor the infrastructure, networking, and API functions. Now, as a final uh, uh, component here in terms of security, this high-level security discussion, uh, we want to just talk briefly about authentication. Strong passwords are enforced uh, with uh, Label Studio uh, Enterprise. Some schemas include things like the similarity between the password and other attributes, minimum length of eight characters, uh, checking for common passwords, alphanumeric strings, and, and, and others. Uh, the passwords are then encrypted uh, using PBK DF2 uh, algorithms, as well as SHA-256, I believe, as well as the, the app forces the browser to send only cookies over HTTPS connections. So 
with that, I know this has been a very high level overview, but the key points I want to uh, emphasize here uh, in terms of securing data, one of the best ways to secure data is to not ever have it at all. So one of the points I brought up uh, uh, several times is that the data is not stored in Label Studio. Your data never needs to go through Label Studio. We simply have the references to your data to enable the annotator and reviewer to access the data in their browser. So the data is brought directly from your cloud storage to the browser itself. So if there's anything I would like you to, uh, uh, to keep uh, in the discussion would be that. Now, I'd like to open the floor to any questions uh, uh, from the audience. All right, it looks like we got a couple. Um, let me look through here really quick. Um, so I guess uh, one question that I see in here is um, they're asking what are the all of the different physical locations where a customer's data could be stored, like uh, like production, development, backup locations. Mm -hmm. Got you. Well, um, as as just mentioned, um, so the great thing is even in the annotations, uh, there's really no need to store any of your data. So the annotations uh, can be, uh, you know, the, the data itself, first of all, it does not reside. Uh, within the Label Studio Enterprise Storage uh, if you're using best practice. If you're using best practice, you're not uploading it to, to Label Studio, you are connecting your cloud storage. Um, even during the annotation step, uh, let's say you're, annotation, you're annotating text and you have the option to, instead of uh, saving or storing that, that text annotation as in, within the, within the the JSON, you have the option of storing the text location instead. So again, um, there's no physical location. There's, there's essentially, you have act, you have control of your data the whole time. Uh, the data does not need to reside uh, with uh, or through uh, Label Studio Enterprise. All right, perfect. Um, let's see, here's another one. Uh, they asked, uh, what's the user registration process? For example, like provisioning of users, granting access, revoking access, et cetera. Yes. So uh, in both the open source and the uh, enterprise version, uh, one way to, in, to bring on users is through, the, uh, through an invite link. You can provide them a link, and that link they can use to register on your register to your organization in Label Studio. Uh, with the enterprise version, you also have the option of using single sign-on and SAML uh, to register through Okta, Active Directory, uh, OnePing, etc. Uh, that's that's essentially how you you would perform registration. Uh, for our more enterprise clients, uh, certainly the uh, single sign-on is uh, far far handier uh, for them, just because it provides more automated uh, way to manage those users. Very good questions. Keep them coming. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, how about uh, here's one. Um, how does Label Studio ensure the authenticity and message integrity of data coming from or to the solution? Hmm. Hmm. I would say the the key thing is uh, as I was mentioning earlier, the TLS encryption. So the you know the data is encrypted at rest, but also every bit of data that is in transit uh, is also encrypted. So uh, in that way, the authenticity is is uh, validated because, well, if if it were um, anyway modified, changed, or or altered, um, the, the 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 decryption uh, would uh, would falter. So yes, it would be through TLS encryption is how uh, Label Studio. Uh, validates that and confirms, ensures the authenticity of the message. Awesome. Let's see. Um, I mean, those are most of the questions that I've seen. Um, any other questions from the audience?
Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, there are any other ones coming in, man. So uh, well, not not a problem. If you if you have any further questions, you can always uh, take a look at labelstudio.io. Uh, there's the uh, information there for the uh, there's documentation there for both the enterprise as well as open source. Uh, application. If you are interested to try out the enterprise for yourself, uh, you are welcome to uh, go to labelstudio.io or even to app.hardtext.com and you'll see a link for the enterprise free trial. Uh, if you have any more specific questions, you please reach out to sales at hardtext.com and we will be more than happy to, uh, uh, to speak with you on uh, Label Studio, security, whatever topics that, that are on your mind. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bernard. And, um, you know, as you just noted, if you do have questions, I just saw uh, something come into the Q&A uh, about uh, getting a price quote. You know, if you are looking at, into uh, into getting Label Studio Enterprise, uh, just ping us at sales at hardtext.com. We'd be happy to get you some pricing and uh, walk through your specific use case and show you all the ways in which uh, our solution can work well for you. So um, do not hesitate to reach out because we'd love to chat with you about it. Um, so yeah, anyway, with that, like I said, this has been recorded. So we'll go ahead and share that out once the recording is available. And in the meantime, if you have any other questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. So uh, thank you very much for attending and we will catch y'all at the next one. All right. Thank you, everybody.